Good morning viewers, welcome back to my channel and uh, today's topic is uh, about how to train your chest muscles and it is basically the same sequence of demystimal uh, the myths of strength training part 3 of the, uh, of the series and today we'll be going to discuss about chest muscles and um, see basically chest muscles contains three muscles and uh, the topmost part which is called the upper chest is called the clavicular head which runs from the two third of the clavicular head and it inserts here the lateral part of the greater tubercle of the humerus is in this side and the pectoralis uh, major abdominal head uh, sorry uh, the medial head the sternal head also called the sternal head because it's uh, originates from the sternum and uh, it runs from here in this manner in like a V shape and it inserts it in, uh, and it inserts into the same place just like the uh, lateral uh, like in a part of the humerus just below the greater tubercle and uh, basically uh, this particular muscle runs from one to the six rib, uh, six you know the ribs here from one to six and uh, the coastal cartilages and the abdominal head or also the lower part of the chest is runs from here till here and it inserts here so it's called the you know abdominal aponeurosis it starts from here and it inserts into the lateral part of the humerus just below the greater tubercle so i'm just trying to explain you the origin and the insertion of the muscles in the simplest uh, possible way and i don't want to make it too scientific because uh, what i believe is that like you know i just want to simplify the thing so that everybody can understand and uh, basically the function of the chest muscles basically the clavicular head is to draw the arms like this in the transverse plane or also of also the transverse adduction and uh, like this adduction and uh, this particular clavicular head also helps in like a shoulder flexion assist in shoulder flexion so if we do this kind of movements hope you can see me this kind of movements also got the shoulder flexion shoulder adduction you know shoulder adduction all these kind of movements involve the pectoralis uh, the clavicular head and uh, this muscle is basically a fan shaped muscle uh, because the origin is broad is broad and it's like fan shaped and the, all the uh, tendons are attached into one particular area just below the greater tubercle of the humerus and the lateral part or the side of the humerus this is the humerus the arm bone is called the humerus so all the muscle fibers are inserted here it's like a fan shape the muscle is like fan shape you know it's broader here it's like this and like this it's like a fan shape so this is a very broad muscle and uh, most of the time you know the most of the time when while doing bench press and other kind of activities a lot of stress is put in the pack del time here so you have to be careful while lowering the weight you should not bump the weight on your chest and the other two hands um, the their function is also almost the same shoulder adduction adduction and shoulder flexion and at the same time you know they also help you to draw your arms like you know together like this so this kind of exercises like you know basically uh, this is the function of the basically the uh, function of the chest muscle and the kind of muscle fibers which uh, we have on the pectoral area or the pectoralis major area is the uh, like you know 55 to 65 percent is the fast twitch muscle fibers because you have to train uh, suppose if you train 90 day of schedule or 100 day of periodized schedule so almost 55 to 65 percent you have to uh, concentrate on heavy weights say 6 to 8 or 8 to 10 repetition you should concentrate more on heavy weights and the chest muscles needs uh, more rest almost at least a 40 to 72 hours of rest is needed before hitting the chest muscles again and one more thing, uh, while doing chest exercises, bench press or any kind of pressing exercises for the chest, uh, mostly the shoulder muscles, the triceps, the serratus anterior, the lats, especially the shoulders, the triceps, the, uh, the serratus anterior, they work as synergist because even the front deltoid. So they help in synergist means they are helping like you know, uh, like, you know uh, extending the arm like this so that you can train your chest. And without the help of the shoulder, the triceps, the serratus anterior, you will not be able to because they are basically the primary muscle. Although while doing bench presses, this is the primary muscle, but the secondary muscles are basically this, or also called the synergies. And the stabilizers in the core area and the opposing muscle, the latissimus jersey, it also works as synergies and at the same time it stabilizes the movement or balances the movement. 
and while doing bench press you should not uh, you should always remember one thing that is lot of scapular movement so you need to while doing bench press you need really need to uh, minimize the movement of the scapula the like you know uh, when you do bench press the square blade the uh, triangular shape kind of uh, like shoulder blades which is behind your back is basically like you know it keeps on moving so to minimize that movement and to uh, avoid any kind of injury while doing bench press you should always stack your chest up squeeze your shoulders upward and then depress and the movement should be from here only you should not hunch back if you keep on hunching back like this if you keep on hunching back you are using the scapula movement too much and you will not be able to contract the chest muscles at the same time you will hard your chest the same time you will hard your rotator cuff muscles especially the infraspinatus at the middle part of the uh, at the spine of the uh, this one scapula and one more thing uh, like you know uh, why training chest uh, you know the exercise should be in this order because uh, the compound exercise has to be done primarily like uh, double joint exercises bench press or any kind of double joint exercises should be done first and you can hit different parts of the chest you know inner part of the chest also you can hit like you know uh, doing various kind of grips you keep on changing the grip so that you can hit the inner part of the chest and for the upper part you can also do reverse grip or the under grip bench presses which are really hits the upper part of the pectoralis uh, also called the clavicular hand and you can do all kind of dips or decline presses for the lower part of the chest and and mostly when you do bench presses it's not like that you know it's only hitting the pectoralis major the middle head it also hits the lower part of the chest the middle head and even the clavicular head because the muscle groups works in uh, the muscle uh, groups uh, work in a group basically you know the muscles work in a group because you cannot just simply isolate the particular area and uh, yes you can do some uh, single joint exercises um, uh, for the upper, upper chest you can do like you know, low pulley clavicle flies inclined flies you can do some flies to hit the pectoral area pectoralis area but after the compound exercises and one more important thing to remember is that do not confuse the pectoralis minor muscle which is which starts from the coracobrachialis and it enters into the third and the fourth rib cage so that muscle is basically a deep muscle although it's named the pectoralis minor but what i have seen that most like you know uh, fitness expert like you know most youtubers i have seen that you know and most bodybuilders basically who are very unaware of anatomy of the human body they used to explain like you know pectoralis muscle contains three groups pectoralis major and this is a minor minor doesn't mean there is a small muscle this is the clavicular head pectoralis is part of the clavicular head is a part of uh, clavicular head is a part of the pectoralis major not it is not the pectoralis minor so do not confuse pectoralis minor the deep muscle with clavicular head and uh, before wrapping up i would like to tell you that you really need to warm up your shoulders while doing chest exercises because shoulder is involved quite a lot and uh, always do the movement in a very safe and effective manner and uh, try to like switch on your repetition and you know uh, train more heavy often and train uh, like you know uh, with lighter weights and uh, quite less and uh, you know the duration of workout should be in such a manner that you should train with heavy weights most of the time and uh, while doing uh, compound exercises remember that you should use the most heaviest weight and while uh, you are training with heavy weights you should avoid try to avoid those you know uh, single joint movements because single joint movement has to be done with light weights and the training volume should be in such a manner that when you are going uh, to train heavy then you should always include only compound exercises or double joint exercises not single joint exercises and when you are training light use machines for compound movements at the same time use some single joint exercises so guys that's all for today and um, uh, today evening i'm going to come live on uh, like you know uh, in the uh, youtube and um, if you really want to like you know, join me you can uh, you know, really uh, come up with your questions or any kind of like you know uh, like confusion about strength and nutrition and um, i'll catch you live at around say 8 pm in the evening and do join me in youtube and that's uh, my channel's name is bhumani singha and uh, please if you really like my videos please subscribe it and uh, press the like button and uh, so that you uh, uh, you can know like you know whenever i am posting some new videos you will be able to like you know uh, you'll be aware that i have posted some new videos so until then uh, keep watching and uh, goodbye